The HyperDeck Shuttle HD is a new desktop recorder and playback device with the same form factor as an A10 Mini Extreme. This neat little device packs loads of features, so let's get into them. First up, I do wanna let you know I have bought this device with my own money and all the opinions are my own, all that good stuff. This is my device to keep and make videos about. So let's get back to it. Look and feel. Now the first striking thing about this new HyperDeck Shuttle HD is this large search dial right on the top. It does look like the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor dial, and in fact, it does have that same feel to it. And it's used to jog or scroll through the footage on its attached media device. Above the search dial are a bunch of buttons for playback, controls, and menus, but we'll dig into those later. Around the back of the device is where all the IO is. First up, we have power. Sadly, there is no PoE on this unit, so it does need an external 12 volt power. Then we have both an SD card slot and a USB-C connection for media to record and playback from. It also has a HDMI input and output and ethernet for control of the device or FTP access. In action. I placed on the desk and hooked up to the ATEM Mini Extreme, these two devices pair really nicely together. I have the HDMI output of the ATEM Mini Extreme connected to the input of the HyperDeck. And I've also done the opposite of this with the HDMI output of the HyperDeck hooked up to the ATEM Mini Extreme's input. Now, of course, I need some power and an SD card attached, but from there, I can hit record and capture the program output from the ATEM. And it is pretty simple to get up and running, which is really nice. With no built-in monitor on this device, and we haven't seen that since the previous HyperDeck shuttle, it is pretty beneficial to have some sort of screen to see what you're doing here. For smaller one-person shows, it's pretty logical to pass the output back into the ATEM, and you can view the output on the multi-view of the ATEM. For bigger shows with a playback operator, you may want a dedicated monitor just for this device. To be quite honest with you though, if you're in a bigger situation with a big show and an operator running playback, this may not be quite the device for you. I see this pitched more towards a smaller show, one person running everything. I think it really makes sense for that. Menus. With the HDMI output connected, I can take a look at the menus here by pressing the menu button on the HyperDeck. From there, you can see recording, setup, audio settings and all that. And one thing to do here would be to set the recording quality that you actually want to use. You do have some options here, H.264, ProRes and DNX HD. I would like to have seen a bigger menu for easier navigation. If I'm playing with these menus through a multi-view or through a five inch screen, I'll have to get pretty close to see what I'm actually doing. That's not a problem with a bigger screen attached to the device, but it does seem strange to carry a huge screen for such a small little device. Network. This HyperDeck works just like any other HyperDeck when it's connected to the network. You can grab the IP address from the menu or you can find it through the utility app. And from there, you can add it into your ATEM software control and control the device. It really makes sense to do this since you can visualize what's happening on the HyperDeck without a monitor attached. In the ATEM software control, I can play back clips, I can pause, I can see what's loaded and all of that good stuff. You can use the network connection to have FTP access to any storage attached to the HyperDeck. So here I have it on my PC and using the IP address of the HyperDeck, I can see all the files that are on this SD card. Alex here has made a great video about FTP on the A10 mini, but the same rules apply for the HyperDeck as well. So give it a go, watch that video in the video description below. The teleprompter. One of the most interesting and unique features about this HyperDeck is the ability to use it as a teleprompter. You can load an RTF or rich text file onto an SD card. And when I switch to prompter mode, I can show that script right here on my screen. Delving back into the menus here, I can have options for font size, line spacing, the side margins, and horizontal and vertical flip. I am pretty excited about this feature. In fact, I'm using it right now for this video in prompter mode, and I will delve into this in a specific video coming out on the channel real soon. So get subscribed for that, and you'll see when it's posted. Playback. With some footage recorded to my media, I can play it back and use the search dials and controls to jog, shuttle, and scroll around. Pressing the jog button allows me for precision search through my clip so I can go frame by frame and take a look. Pressing down the scroll button lets me move a little bit faster around. And then finally, pressing jog and scroll together lets me go into shuttle mode. And this is perfect for rewinding or fast forwarding. When I'm in playback mode, I can press the clip button and only show that specific clip that's playing. While that clip is playing, if I press the play button again, it will loop that single clip. If I leave clip mode here, press play and press play again, all of the videos on my SD card will loop continuously. Other uses. You can use this HyperDeck Shuttle HD to control the playback of footage on the Blackmagic Cloud Store as well. Connecting it up to the Cloud Store lets you go through the menus, take a look at all the clips on there. However, the whole Cloud Store ecosystem is a little bit outside of this video and maybe in the future we can delve into that if I ever get one of those. Here's a couple of things that really got me thinking about this device and they're things I'm still sort of exploring as I use it in my day-to-day -day workflow. What audio and video am I recording? In theory, you could set this on your desk, plug in an input and then press record 
and hope for the best that you're recording the right audio and video. That's why I really recommend a dedicated monitor for this device so you know what you're playing and it makes sense to loop it back into the ATEM Mini Extreme if you don't need all those inputs for your production. Certainly one of the upsides of all the other HyperDecks out there right now is they have a dedicated screen so you can see what video and what audio is being recorded. When can I open up the menu? When you're using it as a playback device, you will want to make sure you've opened up the menu and made all your changes before you start playback during a show. Otherwise, you will run the risk of showing that menu during a playback and you really don't want to do that. Well, we see the prompter on other HyperDex. The prompter mode is a really nice feature and I think the search dial is what really makes it from my use so far. So it seems unlikely that other HyperDex in the rack mount style form factor will get this feature. Price. The HyperDex Shuttle HD is currently priced at $495 US dollars, which is the same price as the HyperDex Studio HD Mini. I must admit this price tag was just a little bit higher than I thought it would be. I did think it would come under the rack devices as a more spread out wide range of prices. That said though, I am pretty impressed by the amount of features packed into this small device and the fact that it is a functioning HyperDeck with all the same features as the previous ones, just packed into a new form factor. I think this would sit really nicely on a desk right beside your ATEM Mini or ATEM Mini Extreme and it will work really nicely for that use case since it's all HDMI based. I'll keep playing with this in the future and do stay tuned for that prompter video coming real soon as well. Otherwise, if you have any questions about it, do let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you when I can or make more videos about it if it makes sense. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.